Well, here I am again, Radio Theory Part 5. Sorry it took a while before I got back on here, but my other camera died. And then I had to go search for something different I could afford. And then that was kind of a pain in the butt. And then I had to find software, so anyway. We finally got things going. Uh, hopefully this works out alright. Uh, it's not a bad little camera. Anyway, um, we're going to be talking about the power supply in this particular radio. One thing I want to mention um, for those who have been following along, this has been a quick run through, just kind of introduction to radio theory. I am going for future reference. Uh, we're going to start working with uh, some tube theory. And as I go through um, the individual tubes, and stuff dealing with biasing and tube constants and, and, and different types of tubes. I will come back to this schematic and maybe a couple others and uh, discuss in more detail how the circuitry works uh, as compared to uh, teaching you about uh, amplifiers and oscillators and uh, power supplies. So everything that we went through has been just a simple run through then we'll get in a lot more depth. Now before I start on this particular power supply I want to talk about something that is I consider kind of very important. You're going to run into some radios and, and TVs that are a little probably newer than this. But they'll have a solid state rectifier, a selenium rectifier. Now I have seen uh, in several cases uh, off and on on YouTube and some other places where some people has talked about them and has talked if they're working just leave them in. I'm here to tell you take them out. Do not use them. If you get a radio or TV for various other reasons but including this if it has a selenium rectifier in it don't plug it in get that thing out of there. This is a selenium rectifier. This is a loaded gun. This thing is deadly. Now what I mean by that is simply this. If these things go bad for due to age or due to something else in the circuitry such as a, a filter cap, cap short or anything but they burn out they will produce a smoke. Now I'm sure you probably heard people talk about it who has smelled it before that it can rather stink and it does. If it happens to you, if it ever happens, hold your breath, get the thing outside, get the room aired out because the smoke is selenium dioxide which is a toxin. It's a poisonous gas. This things are dangerous. It's a bad toxin. Now there are remedies for it and one of the biggest ones and the best ones is air, oxygen, to get your lungs cleared out. The other thing is even if there's one, if you get a radio that the thing has already burned out you can tell it's burnt because it'll be discolored. The paint on it will be all bubbly and everything. Don't touch it. You'll get a selenium dioxide burn. This stuff can soak right through your skin and not only burn you, but get the toxin in your blood. So the best thing with these things is you can leave them in there if they're in good shape like this one for looks, but take them out of the circuit. So anyway, there's my rant for the day. Uh, some things to talk about is how the power supply works. Now this is an extremely simple power supply. This is what they call an AC-DC radio, meaning that actually you could plug this thing in to 117 volts DC and it would actually operate. Um, The filaments are tied in series along with the rectifier. 
to drop down the voltage. If you add all these up, they'll come out pretty close to 117. Actually, they'll come out pretty much right on the money. Uh, there's no power transformer, so the one thing about these is you want an isolation transformer when you're working with them for two reasons. One, the absolute dangers. Uh, now this radio actually has an isolated ground. The ground does not go to the radio. Some do, which makes the chassis potentially hot. Uh, but still, to be on the safe side, always plug them into isolation transformer to protect yourself from any potential harm. The other thing too is when you have a power supply like this with no transformer and if you don't plug it in an isolation transformer and you go say hooking up like an oscilloscope or a little bit newer type of other type of test equipment that has a three prong plug that's grounded uh, even if they're not the, their plug could be switched one way or another if it's not paralyzed. In any case, you could damage your test equipment by probing around in something that has no transformer of its own. So, isolation transformer, very important. Now, the biggest thing in these is your rectifier tube. Now, I want to kind of spend a little time on this. The voltage comes in from our supply, the rectifier, it's a half-wave rectifier. Uh, you will only find these as half-wave rectifiers on where you got just direct line connection for hopefully obvious reasons. The, the main reason is you only have one hot lead, so you can only hook up one plate. So. Uh, a full wave rectifier wouldn't do any good. There's no, nothing else to hook the other diode up to. Now it goes through the rectifier, comes out, and will run through, start through the filtering circuit. This is one filter capacitor, comes up, comes through the audio transformer here, which we did discuss, and then come through a resistor and back down. This makes a pi filter and when I get into deeper we're going to talk about filters some and we'll discuss what a pie filter is and how it operates but this is what filters out the the DC ripple so then you have a, a fairly smooth DC ripple with this power supply with any rectifier whether it's this one in this circuit or you know any other radio or TV that may have or have not a transformer doesn't make any difference the size of the first filter capacitor is very very important now the primary reason for that is if you look up and I'm picking up a lot of shininess from the tape and I'm sorry about that uh, if you look up this tube or any rectifier tube in a tube manual one thing that they'll really seriously point out to you is information about that first filter cap and its maximum size. Now, the reason is when this thing first turns on, this cap's going to demand to be charged. It's going to demand a lot of current. And this thing starts conducting then that capacitor wants to get charged up and it wants it now. The bigger the cap, the more current it draws. The more current then goes through the tube. Now, most, if not all, at least most of the rectifier tubes out there, the cathode, at least the indirectly heated ones where they have an actual cathode, they're not using the filament, uh, the cathode inside the tube is hooked to a special fusible wire that then is hooked and connected to the tube pin. And what that's there for is so the tube doesn't 
completely overheat. The possibility does exist if you severely overheat a tube by drawing way too much current through it, it could literally explode. It can build up so much heat in it that the glass starts giving out. So what happens if you was to change this capacitor here, say maybe 100 microfarad or 150 or 200 or, or some even much higher ridiculous amount, it could draw so much current that that fuse would burn through and stop the conduction. Now, if you actually look this tube up, it says 40 microfarad. And here the, the guys have put in a 50 microfarad. Well, the way they got by with that is you can use a larger capacitor as long as your input impedance into the tube is high enough. Now, impedance is a neat little word, but it, it's basically in the simplest of terms, and there's going to be Probably somebody's going to complain about me using these terms, but it's basically AC resistance. It's more than that, yes, but I'm not going to get into it right now. So anyway, is if I've got something else in here inputting to the tube that gives me a little bit more softer start, gives me a place for some of that current to go and be burned off, such as a, a resistor, uh, the secondary windings on the on a power transformer, things of this nature, then I can probably go up a little bit in capacitance, depending on what, how much of the resistance is or impedance. In this case, they put a 33 ohm resistor here. Now it's not high enough in resistance to drastically drop the voltage to power the radio, but it's enough to cushion and burn off a little bit of that current draw as this capacitor charges up. So it's a shunt resistor is what that is. And it shunts off some of the current so that the tube doesn't get overloaded and possibly burn out. Now You'll notice here it says note 3. Note 3 talks about, since this schematic actually covers two different radios, it talks about the pilot light or this resistor. This resistor is also helping out with the shunning or reducing some of the input into the tube. Now, what note 3 basically says, if the radio has a pilot light, then the resistor is not necessary. But if the radio don't have a pilot light, then you have to put the resistor in. And evidently, and I have not looked up the ratings on a 47 for sure for a long time, but evidently 47 ohms is pretty close to what that filament in that light bulb will be. Now, I think about pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about this. Uh, one thing about these <laughs> power supplies is notice that every one of the tubes, it's all connected in series. So if one of these tubes go out, you know, the filament burns out, then the radio is dead. So then you have to go searching. That's one of the bad things about these things. Uh, as far as this goes, this little deal right here. Its purpose is since this radio is isolated from the, the chassis, this makes a, a ground to the chassis so that the chassis signal-wise is grounded. And the purpose of that and the reason for that is, is if you don't, the chassis becomes can become something similar like a, a, an antenna or a capacitor connection from the different parts of the radio so you need to shunt across and still connect it but by using the capacitor resistor in this filter this actually keeps it as far as this AC goes pretty well isolated uh, but as far as signal goes it's fine and that they'll keep 
the the chassis from being some sort of big antenna or even a potential capacitor that is hooking most of the radio together through the wires that connect everything else up to they can actually transmit or capacity couple with the chassis and then at some other points a signal could actually make it through and cause you some headaches and problems now that's about it now like I say in the future we're going to start going over uh, we'll probably start with uh, some real basics and tubes um, there's some other things I want to do also I want to talk about components in general um, you know resistors and capacitors uh, more or less how to figure the values and, and stuff and uh, I really can't think of anything else so we'll get started on that fairly soon and be looking forward to that this is about the end of this so see you later